In this video, we will be configuring two-factor authentication with 40 Authenticator. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using 40 Token, and we're going to make sure that this is a centralized implementation so that multiple devices, Fortinet and non-Fortinet devices, are going to be able to use this second factor of authentication and integrate with the 40 Authenticator. Additionally, we're going to ensure that we can bulk import users and associate them with 40 tokens at scale. So there's a few different methods of an end user actually receiving a one-time password or, or a token or a push, for example, right? So the very first option would be by using the 40 token mobile application. So in this case, we could either um, be provided with a six digit uh, unique ID that changes every 60 seconds, or we can also have a push notification via this uh, mobile 40 token like we're seeing in this screenshot here. Second option is to use a hardware 40 token. So there's a couple different form factors. There's one that would be uh, attached to a keychain. Another one is a credit card form factor. Additionally, we can also send the one-time password via email or via SMS. Um, ultimately, more often than not, the mobile 40 token is, is the most popular option. And then there's also uh, a hardware 40 token comes in at the second most popular. So here's an idea of the topology that we are trying to achieve. So in, in this case, what we're going to do is we will have um, devices, in this case, like a FortiGate and maybe another switch. But the idea is that we take a device which has a radius client on it. And then on our 40 authenticator, we are importing uh, user information from an LDAP server. So in this case, we have three users that are located within one group on the LDAP server. Uh, the 40 authenticator is going to import that user and then associate it with a token and then any type of radius request that comes into the 40 authenticator is going to be prompted for first of all the username and, and password credentials which are going to be sent off to the LDAP server every time and second of all it's, go it's going to be challenging that radius client uh, for that second factor of authentication which will be the 40 token and that particular uh, point of interaction will be between just the radius client and the 40 authenticator. Since we'll be using email a lot, let's take a quick second and just make sure that our email configuration is okay. So if we go under messaging SMTP servers, um, in my particular case, I'm going to use this local SMTP configuration. Let's just test the connection. Uh, in my case, I'll just go, you know, testing something like that. Okay, and just make sure that you receive that, that email there. So email settings are okay. And then also check your email services so that users are associated with that SMTP server that you have configured in the previous screen here. Now let's just take a look to make sure that we have a couple 40 tokens on this uh, 40 authenticator. So we can do that by going to authentication, user management, 40 tokens, and here's my two 40 tokens. I've also purchased some 40 tokens, so I'm going to import them now uh, using the activation code from the email that I received post-purchase. So to import into the 40 authenticator, go to create new 40 token mobile, and then I'll just enter the activation code here. All right, and now after entering the, the correct activation code, I've successfully imported 25 40 tokens along with the two free trial 40 tokens, so for a total of 27 40 tokens. Now let's start by importing one user from an LDAP server and then associating a token with it. So we go, go to remote auth server, LDAP, create new. Okay, and we'll use regular authentication here. We'll put in our domain slash the administrator username and then the administrator password. Let's make sure that when we click browse, we do actually see an option here, which we do, that's perfect. We'll just click that, hit okay, and there we have it. Now, a couple items that we should consider here would be one, being secure connection. So if, um, you know, if we wanted to configure LDAP S between um, the 40 authenticator and the LDAP server, uh, that would be you know, a more secure way of, of configuring this communication. We could configure the protocol and then configure the CA certificate. Additionally, we may want to consider enabling Windows Active Directory domain authentication so that the communication between the Radius client, as in the FortiGate, for example, or any other Radius client, and the 40 authenticator um, 
can be something other than just plain text uh, communication. So without enabling this functionality, we can only have PAP as the radius protocol between the, f the radius client and the 40 authenticator. But if we enable this and get this up and running, um, then we can use the more secure protocols such as CHAP and MS CHAP. So just something to consider. Both of these items, we're not going to go into how to configure them, but just, just a quick item to, to consider um, before actually configuring everything. Now that the LDAP server has been configured, now let's import a user by going to User Management, Remote Users, Import. We'll select the server we just created. And then let's just go and pick one user for now, just to keep it simple. Test user one. Okay, so we've imported that user. Let's edit the user. And then let's associate a one-time password token. So as we can see here, we have pretty much four different options. One is 40 token mobile. One is 40 token hardware. Another one would be email. So this would be the user actually receiving a one-time passcode via email. Another one is SMS, and you can purchase um, SMS through Fortinet, uh, but more often than not, usually the options to be used here is hardware and mobile. So in this case, we're gonna select mobile, and then we'll just pick one token, doesn't really matter here. And now we, have to, we do have to put in an email here. So I'll type in, you know, testing one, two, three at, um, you know, testing.com, right? After we hit OK, the end user should receive an email right away. Now we should have an attachment within that email that has a QR code. So then now we'll go into the 40 token mobile application that we've downloaded from either the iOS app store or the Play Store. And then I'm just scanning it in the background right now with the camera. OK, there we go. So in my case now, on my Android phone, I have a, a six digit token. Uh, that's recycling every 60 seconds. Uh, so, so now we're completely set up for test user one. All right, so let's take a quick look at our LDAP server for a second. So this is the user that we just imported into the 40 authenticator. Let's take a look at test user two and test user three. Uh, so right now they don't have a, an email address set up. So we do need that as a requirement uh, to doing a, a remote sync. Uh, so let's just do that quickly here. Um, test user three at test.com. Okay, perfect. So yeah, as a next step, what we'll do is we'll try and do a remote synchronization rule to, to try and simulate how we would do this on, on a larger scale. In this case, we're just going to be, you know, trying to import these two users, uh, automatically, but, but this is really going to be the approach to do it at scale. Okay. So on our 40 authenticator, go to user management, remote user sync rules. And then let's create a rule here. So let's go remote sync. We'll create, we'll, or sorry, we'll reference this LDAP server. And then uh, let's set a group filter, which will be test group one. And let's say, okay, if we do have um, every, for every user that we import, let's also associate a, a 40 token mobile if, if it's available. And then for testing right now, Let's just set the synchronization for five minutes um, just because we're testing and let's, yeah, let's try it out. What I'll do just to kind of speed things up, I'm going to do a manual sync here. Okay, now let's check into the remote users and there we have it. So we have test user two and test user three, which are imported and associated to a specific, uh, like a, the next available 40 token mobile. And then, um, you know, as, as another test, let's take the next step. I'm going to add test user three and then wait five minutes. I'm not gonna make any configuration changes. That's really going to be the final step to make sure that um, the remote sync rule will work even as we add new users to our environment. They'll automatically get a token associated with it. And then the users will also be emailed immediately. Also, as we can see here is that two emails were automatically sent out right when I did that remote sync rule at pretty much 4.18, uh, one for test user two, one for test user three, both of which have an attachment with a QR code. All right, so now it's been four minutes that I've had test user four added to the server. Let's take a look at the 40 authenticator. Okay, there we have it. The user has been imported. And um, again, like mentioned before, we do have to ensure that on the LDAP server, 
The email is specified, otherwise it will not be imported by the authenticator. So we'll take a second, we'll go to our system and our main dashboard. So we can see right now that we have uh, four 40 token mobile items being used, and then we have a 23 total that are available. So as a quick test, let's just make sure again that that remote sync rule works, and let's remove um, test, test user four from the LDAP server. Um, this would be kind of simulating an employee leaving, where we don't actually have to focus up anything on um, the authenticator, just the, the Active Directory user being removed um, will address what we see on the authenticator. All right, and five minutes later, when we synchronize again, we can see that test user four is no longer there. Again, no changes at all have been made on the 40 authenticator. Now we can go back to system status, and we can see that now we're only using three 40 tokens um, and then we have 24 that's available. So it's really good how this is very scalable. And then, you know, as users are added, we just use another 40 token from our pool here. As users leave, then same idea is that our use count will go back up. So up until now, we've mainly been focusing on um, the configuration and the testing between uh, our 40 authenticator and um, the LDAP server. But now let's let's take a look and let's focus a little bit on our Radius client. In our case, we're, we're going to use a FortiGate because it's convenient. Again, it does not have to be specific to Fortinet products. Um, so yeah, we'll be focusing on our, our Radius client and our 40 authenticator communication so that we can tie in the, the whole entire topology um, to get our two-factor authentication up and working. So on the 40 authenticator, we'll start by creating what's called a realm by going to user management and realms. And we'll just name it Windows Server. And the user source is going to be that Windows Server uh, LDAP server that we just created a, a few minutes back. Okay. Then we'll move forward to configuring Radius Service Clients. We'll go Create New, and then we'll just type in here FortiGate. We'll put in the IP address of the FortiGate that's going to be the Radius client. And then we'll type in a shared secret, which we're going to have to use in just a moment on the FortiGate. Now on the FortiGate, um, we're going to go to user and authentication, Radius servers. We'll configure a new Radius server. In my case, I'm going to use uh, PAP authentication. It is plain text authentication, just a disclaimer there. I put in the IP address of the 40 authenticator and then I'll be typing in the shared secret, the same one that I just specified on the authenticator, and then we'll hit test connectivity. Okay, so this is perfect. So this is pretty much indicated that the communication between the FortiGate and the 40 authenticator, um, th their communication is essentially authenticated. So the next step now is, let's just do a quick test just so that we can kind of show something here. So if I type in test user one, and I type in the correct credentials, let's hit test and see what happens. That's going to fail, and that's expected that that's going to fail. We're gonna address that right now, but the point I wanted to make there is that the communication simply between the FortiGate and the authenticator was successful, and that's why this connection shows as successful. But the next step that we have to do now is create a radius policy that references that client that we just created a moment ago. Okay, so let's create a radius policy now. So first what we have to do is name our pol policy. Let's just name it FortiGate um, policy. And then we say, okay, the, the FortiGate is going to be one of the radius clients that we will allow to match this policy. Um, obviously, if we created more clients, you can add many more here. And, and that's part of the, the scalability of the 40 authenticator. Now let's proceed forward, hit next. Next. Okay, here we have it. So now what we have to do is we have to change the realm. So we have to specify, okay, whenever a Radius client matches this policy that we've configured, which server are we going to be referencing? Are we going to allow local user authentication when a Radius client is, is matching this policy? Or in this case, what we wanna do is specify Windows Server. And um, you do have the option to filter further if you want, but right now we're just gonna keep it simple and specify the whole entire server. And let's see if there's any advanced options that we have here. 
Okay, so we will leave the default of allow 40 token mobile push notifications enabled. Uh, you know, that way um, users will get a push notification, you know, assuming that there is a, a path between um, their mobile device and the 40, uh, the 40 authenticator. Uh, hopefully this is going to work for you guys. If it doesn't, it might be something that you'd have to troubleshoot a little bit. Uh, but for now, let's proceed and let's go to next here. And we'll save and exit our configuration. Okay, back to our FortiGate, let's test again. There we have it. So as we can see here, um, the, the authentication is actually working, but what we note here is that more validation is required, and that's exactly what we want. That more validation is required item, that's going to be the, the requirement to have that second factor authentication, which would be that 40 token, um, either, either us accepting a push notification or us typing in a six digit code. All right, now, so to complete the full end-to-end -end configuration, uh, let's go to user groups on our FortiGate. We'll add a new user group. I'm just calling it uh, fac underscore radius underscore group one. And then it has referenced that, that 40 authenticator server, um, that 40 authenticator radius server that we had just configured on our FortiGate a moment ago. And then additionally, we'll go to VPN SSL VPN settings, make sure that that user is showing up here under fac radius underscore group, and then it has a portal associated with it. And then the final thing is just to make sure that we have a firewall policy that references that same source user. And there we have it. So now let's test with the SSL VPN web portal. All right, so as we can see here, we got the 40 token uh, request. Uh, now, let me just find the one that I have on my end here. So I'm just typing in the token code right now. I did also get a push, so I could have just um, hit accept there, but I'm just gonna put in the six digit code here, and then I have access right now. Okay, so let's go back to the 40 authenticator now, and let's take a look at the log. So as we can see here in the log, we, we have a record of that authentication. And just in general, this, this log access log section can be really, really valuable in the case that something is not working as expected. Uh, if something's not working here, take a look in the logs, uh, find the timestamp based off of when you were testing, and uh, more often than not, you're gonna find some really valuable information there as long as, uh, you know, as long as obviously our radius client, in our, in our case, the FortiGate, is configured correctly to at least send traffic to the 40 authenticator. Additionally, if you want to have that next step of um, diagnostics, then type in your 40 authenticator's um, IP address and then forward slash debug, and then scroll down until you see radius authentication. And as you can see here, there's, there's a lot more of a, of a ver verbose debug here um, if, you, if you want to have even more information about um, the authentication there. So that kind of wraps things up for this tutorial. Um, these next couple items, they're a little bit outside of the scope of what we have for, for time here, but uh, a couple other items to consider is that you do have the option to, to leverage your tokens, not, for, not with just a Radius client. You could also use, for example, a Windows machine. Um, this might be useful for like a terminal server or an RDS environment where you want to also require um, a second factor of authentication that, that stops our Windows login. Um, so that might be one thing to, to check out and take a look at. Um, additionally, outside of that, there's also SAML authentication. So, so that can also be used to, to protect your applications that are using HTTPS. So just a couple additional items to, to consider and, and maybe in a future video we can cover that as well. All right, so thanks everybody for joining this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.